Well, this video is to inform the general public about crimeware and to raise awareness, especially about the subject with all the cyber crime happening. Well, crimeware is a general term for software used to perpetrate crime. Things like stealing personal identities, money, or proprietary information. And crimeware can spread by way of viruses, Trojan host programs, worms, spyware, or even things like adware. There's even something known as crimeware as a service, CAAS, which is used in the underground market where illegal services are provided to help underground buyers conduct cyber crimes such as attacks, infections, and things like money laundering in an automated manner. Then there's what's known as a rootkit, which has a purpose of protecting malware. And think of it as an invisibility cloakware for malicious program. And this malware is then used by cyber criminals to launch an attack. The malware protected by a rootkit can even survive multiple reboots and it just blends in to the regular computer processes. And a rootkit can be used to open a backdoor. And this then allows the hackers to enter the system. An example of a virus that installs a backdoor is Doomworm. It's created to actually send junk mail for infected computers. And spyware is a type of malicious software or malware. And it's installed on a computing device without the end user's knowledge. So it's secretive and it invades the device, steals sensitive information, and it relays it to advertisers, data firms, or even like external users. And the Zeus botnet has been in the wild since like 2007, and it's among the top botnets that are active today. And this bot has an amazing and rarely observed means of uh, stealing personal information. It does it by infecting users' computers and capturing all the information entered on banking sites. And botnets can be used to perform distributed DDoS. And this is basically stealing data, sending spam, and it allows the attacker to access the device and its connection. The owner can basically control the bot and use command and control software, which is CNC software. And the word botnet is a portmanteau of the word robot and network. So botnet, robot, network. They can be detected because they both operate on the application layer of the OS model. Attackers are using these rootkits to change the functionality of an operating system by inserting malicious code into it. And this gives them the opportunity to easily steal personal information. Removing a rootkit is a really complex process and typically requires the user to have specialized tools. Specialized tools such as TDSS Killer, a utility from Kaspersky, and this can detect and remove the TDSS rootkit. And in some cases, it might even be necessary for the victim to reinstall the operating system if the computer is really too damaged, then they have to reinstall the operating system. And malware bytes by security software can scan and detect rootkits. So, because malware bytes is a decent antivirus tool, and especially in comparison to its previous versions, it's greatly improved in terms of performance and virus detection rates. The current version will definitely protect your device from even things like zero day threats. You might wonder what's a backdoor? This is a program that sets the instructions that allow users to bypass security controls when accessing a program or computer or network. And a computer virus is a malicious piece of computer code that's designed to spread from device to device. If you look at subsets of malware, these are self-copying threats and they're usually designed to damage a device or to steal data. And you just have to think of the biological virus. And basically a rootkit is a similar variant of a trojan, which is also another word is like a rat, a remote administration tool. And usually, but not always, a rootkit will try to obfuscate its presence and hide itself from any security software that's present. And rootkits, they subverting the OS through the kernel or the privileged drivers. And if the rootkit has to be activated or used remotely, 
It must keep an open door to receive commands and execute them. The undetectable door opened by the rootkit is the one that's called the back door. You see, if you look at things like viruses, worms, Trojan horses, they replicate themselves to other computers and devices. So if you look at user IDs, these are also known as usernames, logon names or sign-in names, you know, all these things could be in danger. You have to keep your digital life private. And a program that spies on your computer activity is really dangerous. It's a dangerous form of malware. It won't present you what ransomware requests or announce that it's deleting your files. It will just be there. And instead, it, it will hide silently on your system, watching and recording while your computer activity is going on. That's real intrusion. Spyware is just gathering and sending without the user's knowledge. As soon as you're online, it's out there broadcasting what you're doing on your computer. Sometimes it's even recording your keystrokes and using that for online advertisements and report them to, you know, research firms. And a good idea you can do is go to Windows Security, Virus and Threat Protection, and then go in the next menu, Scan Options, and select Microsoft Defender Offline Scan. And after clicking the Scan Now button, your computer will restart into a, like a special mode to do a scan for you. And that could be something you could do directly. And exploit kit is a programming tool that allows someone who does not have an, any experience to write code. Exploit kits are known by a number of other names, including infection kits, crimeware kit, DIY attack kit, and malware toolkit. And botnet attacks can be used for even sending spam, data theft, compromising confidential information, as we said, and perpetuating ad fraud, or even for launching more dangerous DDoS attacks, the denial of service attacks. And the botnets, they use one of two structures, a centralized mod model with direct communication between the bot herder and each computer, and the decentralized system with multiple links between all the infected botnet devices. And today, rootkits are generally associated with malware. The things we spoke about already from Trojans, worms, viruses, these help them to conceal their existence to users and to the system processes. And a botnet is a network of hijacked computers that are infected with bot malware and remotely controlled by a hacker. And as we already mentioned, the bot network is used to send spam, launch distributed denial of service attacks, and it also could be rented out to other cyber criminals. And a surefire way to find a rootkit is, you know, with a memory dump analysis. You can always see the instructions the rootkit is executing in memory, and that's one place that the rootkit just can't hide. Behavioral analysis is one of the more reliable methods of detecting rootkits. You can check for rootkits by running the Windows Defender offline scan, just like we spoke about earlier. PUPs, potentially unwanted programs, and the POP virus, the PUP virus is also known as the potentially unwanted application, junkware or bundleware. This mostly comes with software that you planned to download. And quite often, financial and e-commerce transactions are done on the internet. The two sectors, financial and e-commerce, are so vulnerable to hackers. Because according to sources, 180 million people were affected by cyber attacks. There's just so many people and you find it sometimes things as simple as passphrases that are too easy, way too easy to remember. But I mean, on the other hand, a passphrase can be easy to remember, but it doesn't also mean that it's more secure than a complex password. Because, you know, longer character strings are cryptographically harder to crack than shorter lines. And even the shorter strings, you know, include symbols, numbers, and mixed upper and lowercase letters. And so a mixture of that is always the better way to go. And malware is a catch-all term for any malicious software. And that's regardless of how it works, regardless of its intent or even the way that it's distributed. And a virus, on the other hand, is a type of malware that self-replicates 
by inserting its code into other programs. And Macs can also get viruses, just like any other computer. And Macs have much stronger protection that's built into them. And uh, they may not offer the full breadth of protection that you might want. And particularly in terms of online identity theft and the ability to protect you from the latest malware threats. That would be an exception. And if we look at some similarities, viruses, these are damaging the computer system and worms slower the computer system and spyware gives information which is in the computer system to the hacker. So those are the differences. Really, the, the viruses will damage the computer system. And if it's about speed, you're probably having a problem with worms. And spyware, the spyware is giving out information which is in the computer system to a hacker. And Michelangelo is classified as a boot sector virus. And it's a type of virus that uh, infects the startup sectors of storage devices. And usually the boot sector of a floppy disk or the master boot record, the MBR of the hard disk. Boot sector viruses are primarily spread through physical media such as floppy disks and USBs. And these are a little bit older but still out there and proper passwords will definitely protect your pictures because really hackers are using a wide range of cracking tools to guess passwords so the better your password the less likely it is that your personal photos correspondence you no know, financial information and personal data will be compromised by a hacker out there and this brings us to the end and if this helped you in any way smash the like button Subscribe and see you in the next video.